So I want to share with you one more thing. And then um, we have time. We'll just do a couple of questions. I was uh, So in 2000, I was asked to uh, the Eddie Bauer. Company. Everybody know what the Eddie Bauer company is? Clothing company. So the Eddie Bauer company was celebrating some big anniversary in 2000, and they were going to bury a time capsule in Seattle, Washington. So they got in touch with me and they asked me if I would write a letter to go to the time capsule. The letter was to the children of 2100. I said, oh, yeah, sure, oh, that's fun, I'll do it. They want me to come out for the burial and everything, which I did. The more I thought about it, the more intimidating the assignment got. Just think about it for a second. What would you write that would mean something to somebody 100 years from now? What are the touchstones you would even use that would make sense? You certainly can't talk about computers. You know, that would be like talking about manual typewriters now. What would you, what would you talk about? How would you reach out? people 100 years from now. And I thought about it a lot. And interestingly enough, the two things I fell on were science and Warren Luther King. And so I want to read to you the letter I wrote, because it's actually relevant. Uh, I wrote it on October 19, 2000, and then went out to Seattle and, and was there for the burial. So I'm in a time capsule somewhere in Seattle, Washington, and somewhere, sometime, you know, maybe somebody's going to buy it. You know, it's, it's creepy. I have no idea I'm not ever going to be on Earth if anybody's ever going to read it. So I read it now, you know, because I'll never get the pleasure of it hearing from it afterwards. Uh, to the children of 2100, there was a popular saying during the last 30 years of the century from which I am writing you. Here's how it went. If we can land on the moon, a man on the moon, why can't we... And then we would fill in the blank space with something else that society should have already accomplished. For example, if we can land a man on the moon, why can't we stop pollution of our rivers? Or if we can land a man on the moon, why can't we find a cure for cancer? Or if we can land a man on the moon, why can't we land a woman on the moon? Perhaps these things seem quaint to you. Perhaps pollution has ceased, diseases have been eradicated, and society has eliminated all forms of prejudice and danger. Perhaps you are exploring new worlds of technology that you would not even comprehend. We hope so. These were some of the things we dreamed for you. This has been a popular preoccupation of the centuries in which I live. Our dreams for the future. We are not unanimous about them. Many times our behavior makes it seem that we care only about the present. But the dreams of some have changed history. You stand on their shoulders. Do me a favor. Please read, or better yet, please watch the I Have a Dream speech delivered by Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. on August 28, 1963. It is the most famous speech of the 20th century. Reverend King's words and example gave courage to a generation of activists, including myself, who believed as he did that the individual destinies of people on Earth were a shared destiny. The struggle in which we are engaged for a clean environment is proof of this cherished principle. As I write this, it occurs to me that instead of that saying beginning with if we can land a man on the moon, it should begin with if we can dream a man on the moon. Whether it be crossing the divide of space or crossing the divide of prejudice, often the most difficult part of the journey is daring to imagine its first step. So dream. I won't pretend to know or predict what your dream should be. I am certain there are things you should like to change. Have the courage to dream how they can be different. Dare to turn your dreams into action. And please do me, do me one more favor. Find my great-great-grandchildren and tell them that their long-gone ancestor sends his love, hopes, and dreams across the vast breach of these generations. I wish you a life that does honor to your children's children. If the bridge you build to their lives is constructive dreams for a better world for them, as well as yourself, they will be a very happy generation indeed. So, dream. Gone. Thank you. Very much.